Known as Steven Million Bird, Lin Guang is a modifier that I encourage you not to skip. Now alongside her banner in the CN version, there's going to be a spending event. I am going to make an apology videos later because this video is going to be so hectic and I don't want an apology to be in this one. Just like Hera, Lin Guang is a must-have modifier because she provides you damage buff, critical rate, attribute damage buff. She's most likely not easy to break down but I'm going to try my best to explain in this video through some sort of editing so it's going to take me a lot. Ling Guang is called a doctor because she provides aid to the people of Shenghe. I think I, think I pronounced that wrong. Don't, don't get mad at me Chinese. And she's a very reliable right hand for the modifier known as Gang Cheng. Ling Guang is the Taoist name for Suzaku, the Vermilion Birds legend. It's one of the four mythical beasts in ancient Chinese tradition culture referred to the Azura Dragon, the White Tiger, Vermilion Bird, and Black Tortoise. This mythology is also used in the game from Tower of Fantasy, but we're, I don't cover that anymore so I'm sorry. Each of these mythical beasts represents the four direction of the Chinese feng shui or something like that, of east, west, south, and north respectively. That's pretty much all I know about what Lin Guang is through Wikipedia and some research in Baidu from Chinese, so I'm not gonna make more out of it so that I don't get roast. But of course by anime logic, just like Fate when Order, they must make our historical figure a hot, thick, milky waifu mama. From the Tianyun faction, Melee combat style with her access key being a dual wielding fan blade, traces mechanism, and fire element. As most of you all know by now, Ling Guang is a support unit. Once you're done building her support role for a game like Eater Gazer, just maximize her damage output. First, like always, we'll cover her kit first. Basic attack. Ling Guang does a 5 hit combo and can be utilized into closing into enemy as it has good approaching in. Success in performing 5 hit will grant you a single trace. Ling Guang dodges does have zero time and that's just about it. There's no debuff or special effect out of it, but it's okay because she's already have a lot in her kit. Now we're talking about her skill and it's pretty complicated, so bear with me. Like every other modifier, Ling Guang has three skill. And each of these skill has a start mode, ignite mode, a flame mode. The start mode is basically the basic version or the first step of the skill. The ignite mode can be triggered when players mix the skill with some basic attack in between and it will ignite with a yellow flash indicating it's the ignite mode. And the aflame mode is after using any of the skill like 4 times and the last one will be aflame mode. It will be available if only you have 4 traces and after using all 4 of combos attack. It's, it's getting complicated but bear with me. So 2 condition, when player uses any of the skill 4 times so a flame mode will be the last skill and it's only able to trigger if player have 4 traces. Each of Ling Guang's skill can perform up to 4 times so each time you use any other skill will allow you to gain 1 traces. It doesn't matter, start mode does give you traces, ignite mode will also give you traces. All skill of Ling Guang shares a single cooldown. So if you miss the skill and not gain a trace to trigger the a flame mode, you're gonna go through a cooldown. How long the cooldown is? Don't worry, you don't have to worry if you don't mess up. Let's start off with skill 1 first, Undying Flame. The start mode of skill 1 is a dash toward attack dealing 1310% fire damage, but if you mix basic attack in between and then ignite mode is triggered, the ignite mode will be available to perform skill 1 followed by a basic attack. It deals 1497% flame damage, almost 200% difference with start mode and also gain traces as well, so there's really no reason to use start mode again. So once you use start mode, always go basic attack and then ignite mode. The aflame mode of skill 1, when players have 4 traces, Ling Guang will consume it and deals a AoE damage of 1684% flame damage. On top of that, the most important thing is that all party members will receive a shining dazzling armor. It has 30% extra HP and lasts for 14 seconds. Very very useful, you don't need healers and when a big attack's coming, you just trigger this. Very nice. Second skill is Rising Splendor. The start mode deals a total of 1310% fire damage. But the ignite mode is very similar, it deals another 200% more damage so I can kind of see that uh, the ignite mode actually backs out so careful. Sometimes you do tend to back out and miss the attacks thus missing 1 traces. I prefer the skill 1 ignite mode over the skill 2 but that's really dependent on you if you want to back out. It's a big risk. 
I do always make this mistake. The Aflame mode of skill 2 consumes 4 traces and also deals a total of 1871% flame damage and gr grants a buff called Burning Amber. Burning Amber is casted to every party member and for every HP that is lower starting from 70% below, will increase by 4% and for every each percent that you lost that is below 70%, will increase by 0.4% more. So, so to summarize, it goes total up to 22%. Skill 3 works differently to skill 2, which is the opposite, but you'll hear it out later, right? It's called Hexagram Auspicious. Start mode deals this damage, Ignite mode deal this amount of damage, and after that, uh, the Ignite mode works different from skill 1 and skill 2, it will go back to start mode, which is kind of weird, but you'll get used to it. And the Aflame mode is what I want to talk about. Very similar, it consumes 4 traces and deals total of the same percentage of damage. All party member will grant a buff called Fire Brilliant, right? When your HP is more than 50%, increase damage by 4%, and for every percent that you have from 50 to 100, gains a total of 0.4%, uh, with a maximum being 16.8%. So you can kind of see that Burning Amber provides more, but when the start of the game, you'll be using uh, Hexagram Auspicious because you're not losing HP yet, am I correct? So this is really up to you. How to count the percentage, I don't even know, but uh, do this skill stack? No, they don't. Because Burning Amber and Fire Brilliant only last for 10 seconds, making it impossible for them to stack together. So the full picture here is that to always use the Ignite mode of every skill because they deal more damage. And keep in mind that skill 1 gives shield for dire situations. Skill 2 is when your HP is lower than 70%. Skill 3 is for the start of the game because your HP is more than 50%. Do I make myself clear? So these are without Aether Code. So when we jump down the Aether Code, it's going to get a lot messier. So I think the most longest explanation of Lingguang is going to be on the kit because I am going to explain the summarized version of the other things. Last but not least, we'll talk about her ultimates. Lingguang ultimate chains with Jingbu and Gang Chang, but preferably Jingbu due to Lingguang Aether codes that specify buffing flame character. But we'll get to the Aether codes later. Let's take a look at it as a standalone ultimate. Lingguang ultimate grants all party member a buff known as the Burning Sun. But when you use a flame mode, once she will grant all party member another buff called Blazing Sun. Burning Sun and Blazing Sun, right? After ultimate, you get Burning Sun. If you use an aflame mode, which is consuming four traces, you get a buff called Blazing Sun. And Blazing Sun will override Burning Sun, meaning you'll lose Burning Sun. So keep in mind, both Burning Sun and Blazing Sun last for seven seconds. So let's see what Blazing Sun, which is the one that overrides Burning Sun, does. Blazing Sun has a 50% chance of increasing party member attack by 10%. Burning Sun, which is after the ultimate one, grants 100% chance. So you definitely want this because not only it it is 100%, but it also has 10% more damage buff. So the ultimate version is better, right? Correct. But the key here is the 7 second. What I can see here is that after ultimate, you want to use your team's ultimate combo chain, everything, throw in within that 70, uh, 7 seconds. It's going to hard to calculate the 7 seconds, so what I recommend you to do is that after you're using ultimate, cast everything you have, and then Lingguang is going to focus on a flame mode so that you have a 50% chance of getting another 10% buff. I hope I make myself clear. This is a bit hard, but don't directly jump after using your ultimate, don't directly jump to a single aflame mode. Cast everything your party member has first, and then only trigger a flame mode. That way you have a 10% chance of a 50% chance of getting 10% damage buff. Hi, I'm showing my face so that I can give you an explanation of how serious I am in explaining all of this. So we're gonna talk about her combo variation first. So at the start mode, it's basically all of this, right? And the next trigger and com uh after start mode, after you trigger a basic attack. Sorry, my bad. It's gonna be a variation of the Ignite mode, right? And you can actually go in between skill 2, skill 3, and whatsoever, right? I'm not gonna explain what's the root path. It's better that you hands on so that you can understand this a lot easier. Skill 3 works a little bit different. You don't have to combine basic attack to trigger the Ignite mode availability. Skill 3, you just tap skill 3, and then Ignite mode is gonna be available. And then you just tap skill 3 again, Ignite mode is gonna be gone, it goes to start mode. Now, like I said, I recommend doing Ignite mode rather than Start mode because they deal more damage. Overall, what I'm trying to say is that uh, for the Aflame mode, right? Skill 1, remember, it's for the shield. Skill 2 is for 
uh, less than HP, less than 70%, and skill 3 is for the start of the game. So you'll notice there's a blue and a red wing on Ling Guang's health bar above, right? And this is nothing really much to be thinking about. Remember that I said that there is a buff for skill 2, a flame mode, and as well as skill 3, a flame mode, right? That is really just to differentiate what buff you're on, really. Okay, see? It's, it's just, right now I'm on the skill 3, so the red one is gonna light up. And if you're on skill 2, the blue one is gonna light up. Really, nothing special, it's just lighting up, okay? So that's basically all my explanation for her kit. Now we're gonna jump to her Aether Coats. I'm gonna disappear now, bye-bye. All right, Aether Codes, I'm gonna cut, cut it short, all right? The most recommended Aether Codes by CN community is blue Aether Codes, followed by red, and least preferred by yellow, so I won't be covering yellow. I'll give you a summary of what it is. Blue does, so basically Ling Guan decreased fire resistance towards enemy with her skill, and buff other flames modifiers flame damage, so you can read it the rest on your own. Red Aether Code is more two modifiers that are not flame elemental. I don't see a good favor here. I don't really recommend you putting Ling Guang and waste her potential on fire team. So if you have Hera, just slap Hera somewhere else. I know it does... Uh, Red is more to the other part of the member where it feels more of a defensive playstyle. And no, we don't play defensive in this game. Last but not least, Ling Guang Fang Tor, and I do want to say this is a 10 out of 10, 100% must have. Now, can be easily obtained via her spending event, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'll, I'll mention it in another video. So when casting a flame mode, a flame mode, the one that consumes four traces, in case you're losing with me, which is a skill that consumes all traces, Ling Guang will buff all party member critical rate by 10% to 25%, depending on Fang Tor's level and attribute damage by 10% to 25% depending on Fang Tor level. And by my understanding, attribute means element. So this also works on others, but we want this to be fully on flame. Not only that, remember Burning Sun only has 50% chance. If you have Ling Guang's Fang Tor, it's going to be 100%. And what's even crazier is the Blazing Sun, which is the one after Ling Guang's ultimate, Instead of 7 seconds, it's going to extend to 14 seconds. And it's gonna be insane to try to time this, so I don't know how to play her. What I do is just, you know, slap Ling Guang on, on AI, that's it. So another two buff that is increased, but according to the official, is called a like and a fire, which I didn't read anywhere. Which I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it's skill 2 and skill 3. Uh, a flame mode, which is the buff. It's gonna last another, it only lasts about 10 seconds, but extend another 7 seconds, so making it 17 seconds, so it's always welcome. So her Fang Tor is going to buff her like crazy, definitely a must-have. Ling Guang Suju is definitely gonna be Niba Lungan lit to spam her ultimate. Bring alongside Jingwu because you're gonna gain a lot more faster, but of course you can also bring Gang Chang. Make sure that Gang Chang is only pulling the enemy. We haven't reached Gang Chang yet. Gang Ching is simple to cover, Ling Guang is harder, so I'm doing this first, and then Jing Wu later. And also, if you can roll for the ultimate charge Siju buff, but always go for damage, critical rate, and critical damage. If you plan to play her physical, this set is possible like melee as a damage dealer, but I really don't see a reason why when Jing Wu is so insane. In case you don't see where you can farm Phoenix Siju, it could mean that you already missed the event, and you have to wait for the next event in the future in order to farm it, depending on how they do it in the global situation. But the Phoenix Siju is limited and the effect is shown right here on the screen. Basically, it buffs quick rate and a little bit of damage. So definitely the best version, right? These are my recommended warp, which I preferably build her damage. I don't see there's any ultimate cooldown or ultimate charge. I'm only going in charging up. So this is what I recommend. By the end of this video, I think you understand that Jingwu is the must-have to go to with Ling Guang. And then Gang Chen can be the team for the triple faction buff, pulling in enemy as well. So I don't see Ling Guang shine with future Kagetsuchi considering that someone told me or pointed out to me that Ling Guang shield prevents Edgy Kagetsuchi from draining his HP or some stuff. Flame Tear is also welcome but considering he is skipped now on global and inferior to Jingwu, I think that answers your question. Jingwu and Ling Guang is a pair, no one else. As for skin, Ling Guang does have a skin, a Chinese Jiangsi zombie skin that will be permanent with lobby animation. Not free, but can be pur uh, purchased anytime. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. This is Ling Guang. Get her Fang Tor, only build her in Flame Team. That's it. I, I I think I'm done talking about her. My mind's blowing up when I cover her kit. So thank you all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like. I will be covering Jing Wu and what to be expecting soon because I made a mistake in one of my videos and I want to apologize, but not in these videos. Anyways, thank you all so much. Zaki here. Hey, it's just a gaming channel.